Dear students, today we are going to see alpha glucosidase inhibitors. Alpha amylase and alpha glucosidase, these two are the key enzymes responsible for the metabolism of carbohydrate. So, for metabolism of carbohydrate, what are the enzymes uh, that would be essential? That is al alpha amylase and another one is alpha glucosidase. Now, we will see the action of alpha amylase first. The salivary and pancreatic alpha amylases are responsible for the breakdown of complex polysaccharides into oligosaccharides and disaccharides. So, for the breakdown of complex polysaccharides, which is essential, salivary and pancreatic alpha amylases are essential. That one will give this to oligosaccharides and disaccharides. So, that would be broken down. Polysaccharides would be broken down and we are getting oligosaccharides and disaccharides and finally preparing them preparing these two that is oligosaccharides and disaccharides for intestinal absorption so that was the action by alpha amylase now come to alpha glucosidase this one consists of maltase sucrase isomaltase and glucoamylase so it is having four enzymes what are they one is maltase another one is sucrase then isomaltase and finally glucoamylase. So, these four are present in alpha glucosidase. So, it is a combination of maltase, sucrase, isomaltase and glucoamylase. It is a membrane bound enzyme that is present in the brush border of small intestine. In high concentrations in proximal part of a jejunum. So, where it is present in high concentrations it is present in jejunum. So, this alpha glucosidase enzyme catalyzes the conversion of disaccharides that is sucrose and maltose into monosaccharide that is called glucose. So, it converts the disaccharides into monosaccharides that is converting sucrose and maltose into glucose. That glucose is finally absorbed by the enterocytes of the jejunum and they enter into the systemic circulation. So, that was the action by alpha glucosidase. Now, we will see the action of alpha glucosidase inhibitors. They inhibit the enzyme called alpha glucosidase. So, by inhibiting that enzyme, what happens? The carbohydrate absorption in the gut, no, that would be delayed. How it is delayed? By moving these undigested disaccharides into the distal sections of small intestine and colon and prevents the glucose production and finally reducing the postprandial hyperglycemia. Some natural products are also having this alpha glucosidase inhibition property. So, they are mitrate and salacia oblonga. So, this is a mushroom and this would be the plant. So, these two are having that property. Alpha glucosidase inhibitors are used in the treatment of type 2 diabetes mellitus, particularly with regard to postprandial hyperglycemia. The examples are acarbose, megalitol, and oglibose. They are not having systemic effect. And they exchanged through the kidneys in unchanged form. It would be given as monotherapy or in combination with other anti-diabetic agents. Now we will see the first drug that is called acarbose. It was the first introduced alpha glucosidase inhibitor and is an oligosaccharide that is obtained from actinomyces utahensis. It is having two parts. One is uh, this NO that can be called as maltosin and this NO that can be called as acarviosin. So, what are the two parts present here? One is called maltose, another one is called acarviosin. So, it has a tetrasaccharide like structure with an acarviosin and maltose. And these two are connected by means of ether linkage and also by means of alpha configuration. So, here already we have known what is meant by maltose that is a disaccharide. So, it is having two monosaccharide units. So, these two are two glucose. Now, come to acarbiosin. So, what is the structure of the third ring? Third ring is similar to the second one. Same as that of glucose. But here in glucose, we have hydroxymethyl in this position. Whereas here, it is methyl. And here, in this position, the glucose should have o, OH. No? So, it should have um, what is the linkage? Ether linkage or glycosidic linkage between these two. But this one is having amino group. And what about the last ring that is same as it of glucose but that one is having extra bond double bond is present there but it is not having oxygen in the structure it is not a saccharide 
so totally these two you no know, how these two are refused by means of amino linkage so these two can be called as acarbiosin and these two can be called as maltose how these two are connected by means of ether linkage with alpha configuration it is a competitive inhibitor for sucrase and a lesser affinity for glucoamylase and pancreatic alpha amylase in humans next drug is called oglibose what is the structure for oglibose it is having cyclohexane nucleus and that one is having four hydroxy groups in first second third fourth and the first position is also having hydroxy methyl come to four, fifth position that one is having amine group and that amine is connected with three carbons so this is called propane and that one is having two hydroxy so that's why it is called dihydroxypropane so what is the structure cyclohexane that is having four hydroxy groups and the first position is having hydroxy methyl fifth one is having amino group and that amino group is connected with the dihydroxypropane so that is the structure for oglibose so here the parent is cyclohexane with four hydroxy groups four hydroxy for hydroxy it should end with ol for four hydroxy it should end with tetral okay tetral so what where the hydroxy groups are 1 2 3 4 so that's why it is called cyclohexan 1 2 3 4 tetral now we have to fill the substitutions so five open bracket in that 1 3 so in that two positions only we have hydroxy groups that's why di 1 3 dihydroxypropane and this two yl because second position is connected with the two yl amino here in that one hydroxy methyl hydroxy methyl close bracket cyclohexane 1 2 3 4 tetral so that is the structure of oglibose actually it is a valeolamin derivative what is meant by valeolamin so this is the structure cyclohexane with four hydroxy groups first position is having hydroxy methyl fifth one is having amino group now compare this valeolamin with this one here in valeolamin one h is replaced by means of this dihydroxypropane okay so by replacing this by means of hydrogen means we are getting valeolamin that's why it is a valeolamin derivative it is the newest drug in this class it is used to lower postprandial hyperglycemia now we'll see the sar of alpha glucosidase inhibitors so this alpha glucosidase inhibitors are having so many hydroxy groups so polyhydroxy groups are present here so this polyhydroxy groups are essential for alpha glucosidase inhibition because they mimic the natural substrates maltose and sucrose that's why this polyhydroxy groups are essential for inhibiting the alpha glucosidase enzyme here it is having secondary amino group no that prevents the protonation of essential carboxylic acids with glycosidic oxygen bond of the substrate so this uh, secondary amine that is also important so what are all important for alpha glucosidase inhibition the presence of polyhydroxy groups and this secondary amino group what is the use of this polyhydroxy groups they mimic the natural substrates like maltose and sucrose what is the use of that secondary amine group that prevents protonation of essential carboxylic acids with the glycosidic oxygen bond of the substrate So that's all about alpha glucosidase inhibitors.